On November 28th of 2018, a woman went missing in Costa Rica, and this day just so happened to be her birthday. Excited to get to another age, she decided to spend a week in the country to celebrate. Unfortunately, she would never be able to do that because something absolutely terrible happened to her. This is the case of Carla Stefaniak. Hello, friend, and welcome to High Time Crime. My name's Joel, and on here I specialize in true crime and also making a mean bowl of spaghetti. Don't uh, forget the meatball. And yeah, I'm Italian. But anyway, today we're going over a very tragic case of a woman named Carla Stefaniak who was just trying to celebrate her birthday on a beautiful vacation getaway. Carla Stefaniak was born on November 28th of 1982, around 12.30 to 1 o'clock in the morning, to Carlos Stefaniak. She had two brothers and really not much is known about her early life, but in 2000, at the age of 18, she immigrated to Tampa, Florida. About 12 years later, in 2012, Carla moved to Hollandale Beach, a city in Florida, and this is where she'd stay. Carla was considered to be incredibly kind and absolutely loved her friends and family. She brought a great amount of joy to everyone around her, and one of Carla's best friends said that she had a loud and vibrant personality in the way she dressed and talked. And that's clearly a fact, especially if you followed her on Instagram, where she posted all about her life and friends. Carla was an insurance agent in 2018, and this year she was turning 36 and decided to go on a six-day-long vacation to Costa Rica with her sister-in-law, April Burton. On Thursday, November 22nd, it was Thanksgiving Day, and these two ladies arrived in Costa Rica. Carla absolutely adored this country and wanted to live there. She posted multiple photos while she was there. In this Instagram post, you can see she said she was going to be a future resident. In another post, Carla said that she was going to miss this place. Both of the women were having an absolutely wonderful time. But unfortunately, April had to go home early because she had something to attend to. Carla wanted to spend one extra day to celebrate her birthday the next day, though. On Tuesday, November 27th, Carla dropped April off at the Juan Santa Maria International Airport in San Jose. Afterwards, she dropped off the rental car that they had got for the week to a place called Thrifty Car Rental. This was at about 11.30 a.m. At 12.23 p.m., Carla then took an Uber to the place she decided to go, and that was at a hotel called the Villa Le Mas. Carla booked it through an Airbnb. Before they got there, though, Carla's Uber driver took her on a little tour of the city. This particular hotel had very mixed reviews, and you can see that on TripAdvisor. One guest said that the Villa Le Mas was a traveler's worst nightmare come true and to be afraid, be very afraid. And this almost prophetic statement definitely had some merit. Also, apparently this hotel had an armed security guard 24 seven, but you're gonna find out soon that he was clearly no help. But after the Uber driver took Carla to the hotel, she asked if he could wait outside while she got ready. After about 30 to 45 minutes, Carla obviously paid him and paid him some more to take her around the area. While she was in town, she sent photos to her friends and family, and she bought a purse and some earrings. At around 4 to 5 p.m., Carla was dropped back off at the villa but had some more plans for the night. Carla was specifically still in contact with April, and at 6.30 p.m., she sent her a picture of the villa and told her that she was going to go to a jazz cafe. 
At 6.55 p.m., Carla sent a message to a group of friends telling them that it was raining very heavily and that the power went out. She also said that it was pretty sketchy there. At 7.30 p.m., Carla started to FaceTime one of her friends and told him that she was considering going to a jazz club but didn't want to go anymore because she was too tired. At 8.20 p.m., Carla texted her group of friends again and said that she was going to go out, but she's dead tired. And at this same time, she also texted April, telling her she was going to ask the groundskeeper for help finding some water. After she got back, Carla was still on FaceTime with her friend, but then her phone died. This was the last time that anyone had contact with her. A few hours would pass, and at about 12.17 a.m. the next day, or Wednesday, November 28th, Carla's phone connected to the internet for a very short time. It's unclear as to whether or not the power was still out, or if it had came back on. But regardless, this is where everything starts to really fall apart. Hours would go by, and nobody heard from Carla, and this was very, very strange. Her flight was set to leave at 1.30 p.m. on that Wednesday, but when that time rolled around and Carla still hadn't contacted anyone, her family started to get very worried. A few more hours would go by, and when Carla wasn't at the airport, her family called the FBI and also the United States Embassy in Costa Rica. Local authorities in the country went and talked to the guards that were at the hotel, and they told her that she checked out with her belongings a bit after 5 a.m. Once again, her flight was at 1.30 p.m., so why on earth would she check out early? It didn't make any sense. Apparently, Carla was known for not being early for basically anything. There was also zero cameras at the hotel, so the police couldn't check to see if the guards were telling the truth. If you remember, a bit ago, we talked about Carla's Uber driver from the day before. Well, the police also got into contact with him. He told them that the day before, Carla asked him if he could pick her up at 8.30 a.m. the next day to take her to a shopping center before they went to the airport. When that time rolled around, Carla was a no-show, and so the Uber driver decided to just leave. The next day, on November 29th, Costa Rican police posted on social media asking for help to locate Carla and a few days later, she would be found, but unfortunately, not the way that anyone wanted. On December 4th of 2018, local authorities with cadaver dogs were looking all around the area close to the hotel, and about 200 feet away, they made a gruesome discovery. Inside of a trash bag, Carla was found dead with multiple stab wounds to her neck and upper body, and also blunt force trauma to the head. She had a defensive stab wound on her hand, which showed that she really did try and fight for her life. Investigators also found traces of blood all over the room that she was staying in. Immediately, both of her brothers and her father went down to Costa Rica to identify her just to make sure that it was her. Sadly, it was and it's awful that they had to witness her in that sort of state. They both made statements shortly after, and I'll play them for you, starting with her brother. People that know her and people that didn't know her, they can see something special in her smile. So that's how we want her to be remembered. And this next one is of Carla's father, and just a warning, it's very upsetting. I want to show you the picture. Let me, let me look for the picture. In my phone, that's how 
I'm gonna remember her. <laughs> Give me a second, please. Okay, those are or my two girls and my two boys. <laughs> now the team lose Kala. That's my team. That's my team. Two and two. We are incomplete. We are incomplete. And I promise you, Carla's name will be remembered. And we will start a foundation in her name to help uh, the people with traveling, which is her passion, obviously. So we, we are going to try to do as much good as we can from in a, in a bad situation. I have to tell you that I'm going to lose the, the two lovers person me. My mom is so sick. She is so sick. Maybe. I'm gonna lose two love, big love of my life. My mom, Carla. Did you see how happy she was? My baby so happy with puppy. <laughs> nice month old. <laughs> this is my favorite big emotion, you know? So now there was a very large question that everyone was wondering, and that was who killed Carlos Stefaniak? It really didn't take long for authorities to piece a lot together and find inconsistencies in the stories that were being told. A bit ago, I said how the guards at the Villa Le Mas were acting quite suspicious and saying that Carla left early at 5 a.m. Well, that was all an absolute lie. Carla had never left the hotel because she never had the chance to. A cleaning lady at the hotel's name was Carla Gonzalez, and she had a friend named Veronica Espinoza, who had a son named Bismarck Espinoza Martinez. He was a Nicaraguan citizen who was illegally in Costa Rica and 32 years old at the time. Veronica recommended that he get a job working as a security guard at the hotel where she worked, and somehow, he did. Well, Carla and Veronica were hanging out when all of a sudden Veronica received a phone call from her daughter-in-law or Bismarck's wife. She frantically called Veronica, crying hysterically, and told her that Bismarck confessed to killing Carla and didn't say anything else, that he just left. Police were called and now pretty much everything was being uncovered. The truth was starting to reveal itself. So here's what really happened that night. On November 28th of 2018, or Carla's birthday, it's thought that super early in the morning, a bit after 1am-ish, is when everything happened. Carla was in room 7, while Bismarck was in room 8, right next door, and he was working as a security guard that night. It's unclear as to exactly what occurred, but if you remember, the entire place had lost power, and at one point, Carla went out to get some water. So Bismarck obviously somehow knew that Carla was staying in the room directly next to him, and he must have been stalking her, waiting to attack. Eventually, he did just that, and attempted to take advantage of Carla but she was not going to go down without a fight. She fought her absolute hardest, getting stabbed multiple times and even in the hand. 
Why or how nobody heard her screams is beyond me. But eventually, Bismarck overpowered Carla and sadly took her life. Afterwards, he cleaned up as he was one of the only people who had keys to the cleaning closet and he cleaned up quite well, but not well enough. Bismarck wrapped Carla in some trash bags and then dumped her body only about 200 feet away from the hotel and then he went about his business. A few days later, he was actually confronted by Carla's brother, Carlos, when he flew down from America. Carlos shook hands with Bismarck, and Bismarck started to tell a very obviously fake story. Carlos said that he couldn't feel anything from this guy, that he just couldn't believe what he was saying. Carlos eventually came out and asked how cold-hearted he could be, and that Bismarck was a monster. And that's absolutely true. Bismarck was arrested on December 4th of 2018, and he was brought into custody around 11 p.m. While police were still trying to figure everything out, they found out he was in the country illegally, and so they held him for six months because of that and because he was obviously a flight risk. Now, this is where things are really screwed up and justice is not served. It would take a year and some months before Bismarck would be sentenced, and the day was now February 17th of 2020. He was given only 16 years in prison by a panel of local judges, which is absolutely ridiculous. Not only was this guy in their country illegally, but he also brutally murdered a very innocent woman. So rather than making an example of him, they do literally nothing. Now, I'm not exactly sure how crime is treated in Costa Rica, though I've been there multiple times. It's absolutely ridiculous to me that he was given such a light sentence. Carla's family felt the exact same way, and I definitely cannot blame them. They wanted him to get at least 60 years. How do you brutally murder someone in cold blood and only get that short amount of time. It's very, very irritating, but Bismarck was also a husband and a father of two children. It's terrible that he was behind the scenes, a very evil man, and hopefully justice can be further served so Bismarck can never hurt anyone again. In his Facebook bio, it states, Soy una persona sociable y respetuoso which is Spanish for, I am a sociable and respectful person. And that's the complete opposite of what he was. Like Carla's brother said, he was a monster. Another thing that's pretty awful about this is that the hotel or the Villa Le Mas wasn't even supposed to be open. They lost their license to allow people to stay there in 2013, which was five years before and they just got caught right after Carlo was murdered, which is, once again, so ridiculous. Carla Stefaniak was a bright and vibrant woman who had her entire life robbed from her on her birthday, a day where she expected to celebrate and be joyous, unfortunately turned into her last, and in an absolutely horrible manner. There were some weird signs that alluded to something happening, but those signs are hard to recognize or even understand. We can pray that Carla is resting peacefully, and it's sad that she never got to leave Costa Rica in the way that she was supposed to. We can also hope that her family is doing all right. Rest in peace to Carla Stefaniak. But anyways, thank you for watching this episode of High Time Crime. If true crime is your thing, then please subscribe and hit the like button because that's all we do. I just want to say I have an all-exclusive Patreon where I post members-only content. Two tiers, the second and the third one, allow for you to have your name at the end of each High Time Crime video. Thank you all so much for the love and support. Have a great rest of your day. Take care, friend.